Okay, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for sticking around and letting us share our research with you. Um, so I am going to be presenting on a living archive. Um, is that? Okay, I thought it was okay. Centering the content creator in feminista community archiving. This presentation is a preliminary exploration of a feminista community archival praxis that I hope will guide my dissertation, a project which aims to collectively build the infrastructure for the digital, digital preservation, curation, interpretation, and future content production of Chicana Latina moving images. The project encompasses three components community and student workshops, a summit and moving image festival, and a digital repository with streaming content of Chicana and Latina moving images. Several factors motivate this project. First is the inaccessibility of Chicana Latina moving image content, which is um, largely scattered across disparate university collections in unsupported audiovisual formats such as DVDs and VHSs. Two is the deterioration, deterioration of health of early Chicana Latina media makers due to living a lifetime in poverty. This is the queer um, Chicana photographer and videographer, Lara Aguilar, who died last year at the age of 58, um, shortly after her first retrospective. And she died of diabetes, which in this day and age in the United States, people really shouldn't be dying from. And um, what's worse is that in her last days, um, she had to leave hospice because she couldn't afford um, the care. And um, unfortunately, this is a story that many early Chicana artists and filmmakers um, share now that they're in their 50s and 60s and 70s. And the poverty experienced by early Chicana artists and filmmakers is likely to follow future generations of Chicana Latina media makers as we continue to experience funding cuts to arts and cultural initiatives in addition to a looming student debt crisis and a devastating housing crisis. Lastly is the increasing underrepresentation and misinterpretation of Chicanas and Latinas in the media. Each of these contributes to broader systemic inequalities which reproduce racism, sexism, classism, and colonialism. But why a moving image archive? You know, how can a moving image archive help to alleviate any of these problems? Well, because visual representation matters. Since the 1960s, studies have shown that media influences the way we think about others and the way that we think about ourselves, while many other studies have shown the ways underrepresentation can be just as damaging as negative representations, as it suggests that the group being underrepresented is not important. In launching our own moving image archival collective, Chicanas and Latinas in media making can engage in an empowering process by which we make collective decisions about what is of enduring value to us, shape collective memory of our own past, control the means through which our stories and visual images are presented, and create our own networks of support. In this sense, the archival process becomes what Stuart Hall, Hall describes as a quote unquote living archive, an intensely social and active site of knowledge exchange, quote, whose construction must be seen as an ongoing, never completed project, end quote. While still a work in progress, the project's foundation, which is the main focus of this paper, is currently based on seven principles learned from community archives discourse, women of color feminism, critical digital humanities, and themes that have emerged in conversations I've had with media makers, curators, community groups, and others directly impacted by the project. In outlining these principles, I'm advocating that such a praxis be used to center the lives, the lived experiences of Chicanas and Latinas, and to create new social bonds and networks of support for future decolonial image making practices and knowledge production. The support for future decolonial image making practices, or sorry, the purpose of this project is to radically rethink the traditional archive from custodian or even steward to community advocate by providing content creators with a strong system of support so they can make a living from their work and enhance the impact in their communities. I determined these key principles by, com by combining my own literature review with an analysis produced with Voyant Tools, a web-based platform used for textual analysis. I look specifically for word frequency and context. One of the terms that came up most often in these bodies of work I just mentioned was people. 
Other frequently used words related in definition to people that appeared in the literature were words such as community, social, together, participate, among others. And the asterisks that you see um, represent root words um, that allows its variants to be um, included in under one single term. So for example, the word um, participate will also include its variants like participated, participation, participating, and so on. In these bodies of work, individuals and communities are prioritized over material objects. Human rights archivist Michelle Caswell stated in an interview that, quote, we fetishize the stuff, but more importantly, it's about the people, end quote. Another characteristic found in these bodies of work was the emphasis on prioritizing and sharing everyday lived experiences while drawing attention to the important epistemologies of marginalized peoples. A People's Archive of Police Violence in Cleveland, for example, was developed in collaboration with community organizers to document oral histories of Cleveland residents who had experienced state violence. The archivist conducted user interviews with the organizers to answer questions about the site, including its desired content, audience, and functionality. Together, they decided the management and direction of the archive, and funding was initially provided by the community through crowdsourcing. True to its name, the archive has been built, owned, and sustained by the people. The root word act, including words like activism and action, appeared consistently in the attendant literature. Many of the theorists and practitioners described the way in which their efforts and those of their colleagues proactively worked towards social change by deconstructing power dynamics and affirming the existence of marginalized groups. For example, digital humanities scholars and practitioners like Moya Bailey and important interventionist movements like hashtag TransformDH have actively challenged mainstream digital humanities by calling attention to the whiteness of the field and its practices while highlighting practitioners and projects that center subjects who have been long, ignore, been long ignored in, in the academy. Chicana digital archivistas like Maria Cotera and Michelle Abel Payan discuss the opportunities digital tools offer to marginalized communities that go beyond thinking about DH in the construct of academia and are deployed in order to live and survive. Accordingly, Cotera has been spurred to create spaces of knowledge, knowledge production outside of the academy as well as within with the Chicana por Mirasa Digital Memory Collective. The archive was initiated as an intentional disruption of the dominant historical narrative by recuperating lost or understudied experiences of early Chicana feminists, and by valuing the process of collecting, organizing, and interpreting archival materials. Another way that social action has been enacted specifically by women of color and QTPAC communities is through the critical praxis of affect. For example, terms like love and the root word feel appeared frequently in the literature. U.S. third world feminists have long been theorizing and mobilizing for action complex feelings such as anger, shame, joy, love, fear, and the erotic. For instance, for Audre Lorde, feelings, especially those considered negative, are a political source. She argues that anger, for example, can be used like a weapon for naming and challenging oppression. Chicana feminists like Maria Lugones, Chela Sandoval, and Betita Martinez have theorized love as a radical ethic and critical praxis of resistance rooted in collective care, coalition building, and transformation. An interview with Ajamu X and Topher Campbell, the co-founders of the Ruckus Black, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Cultural Archive Project, which documents the lived experiences of black LGBT communities, explained that while the archive was created in part to acknowledge the pain and loss experienced by queer black communities due to AIDS and other traumas, the archive's performative quality transforms mourning into a celebration of lived experience. Maintaining a quote unquote artist sensibility, Ruckus uses a variety of activities, including exhibitions, film screenings, and oral history work to publicly acknowledge the community's pain while quote, helping people come to terms with it, end quote, which they argue can lead to love, joy, and healing. The root word new in the context of innovation and creativity was another regular theme. Innovation can be broadly thought of as new ideas, new ways of looking at things, new methods, or content. Innovation contains the idea of producing or doing something differently, implementing something new, or experimenting with alternatives. Creativity is an active part of this process. <clears throat> 
The push to create new worlds of knowledge exchange, exchange communities, modes of resistance, forms of thought, and networks of solidarity through creative forms of the imagination, such as poetry, performance, music, and community engagement is an integral component to these bodies of work. For instance, the Women Who Rock Oral History Archive brings different groups together to creatively explore the role of women in popular music. The archive seeks to transform conventional models of popular music studies by creating alternative histories and new forms of knowledge. It does this through several components, a community-driven conference, project-based university coursework, and an oral history archive. WWR just last weekend had their ninth annual unconference, which used the theme of dance to engage participants with their archive on Memoria Ancestral. The website describes Afro-Latinx maestras guiding participants through movements and rhythms that tap into the resources of women's creativity, compassion, skillful communication, self-reflection, and collective healing. Another key principle found within these bodies of work is the notion of difference. Queer Chicana feminist writer and critical theorist Gloria Ansaldúa, for example, theorized the concept of bridging to foster dialogue across categories of difference to promote coalition building and social transformation. While black feminist and critical race legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw examines difference through an intersectional lens to shed light on the systems of power and oppression that create inequality markers and make the existence of difference undesirable. An example of an archival project that positions intersectionality at the heart of its inquiry is Panama Silver Asian Gold, Reimagining Diaspora's Archives and Humanities, a collaborative cross-institutional course that has students consider the colonial dimensions of archives and the ways intersectionality can produce interventions to dominant repositories. For example, one student project explores the queer Caribbean and its intersections of race, sexuality, gender, class, and nation through maps and timelines that illustrate the lives of the lives of the rise of LGBT representations in literature, illuminating important work often unrecognized in archives. Finally, building close relationships is a key concern found within these bodies of work. Using an example from casual conversations I had during office hour meetings and casual gatherings with Color Coded, a POC tech collective and collaborator of this project. One member explained that, quote, relationships are at the heart of color coded. We're all friends. We hang out with each other, and we care about each other, end quote. Other members have also stressed the importance of building close relationships with other groups to help advance sustainable community-centric projects and to create meaningful change, which they do with care, support, sincerity, openness, and enthusiasm. In discussing the archival initiatives undertaken by UCLA's Chicano Studies Research Center, Director Chon Noriega stresses the importance of establishing and maintaining long-term and reciprocal relationships with the community. He argues that to effectively preserve Latinx art history, we must build trust with community-based organizations and artists, which can mutually result in a strengthened arts infrastructure. A few ways that CSRC has achieved this is by providing hands-on assistance to help artists organize their records and by holding community summit meetings to initiate networks and gather input that, serve, that serves to guide archival efforts. <clears throat> Beginning my project by exploring a set of principles grounded in women of color feminism and decolonial community-centric values has allowed me to begin to envision the possibilities of a collective disruption to the misrepresentation and symbolic annihilation of Latinas in the American social landscape. Guided by this framework, the first step has been to seek input and potential collaborations with community members and groups working in moving image making. Enough interest has been generated to begin to have monthly group meetings, though resource sharing and connections have already begun to take place on a small scale. While the process of turning this vision into a reality will undoubtedly be a challenging and time-consuming endeavor, starting with the commitment to a feminista community archiving praxis allows us to connect and come together to imagine the possibilities of a living Chicana Latina archive, a powerful act of subversion in and of itself. And finally, I'd like to uh, thank current contributors and collaborators which right now are um, color-coded Gabby Garcia, Cassandra Gonzalez, uh, Laura Perez, and Penelope Uribe-Abi. Thank you.